Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series and this will actually mark the end of our uh, season here where we've been building this travel application Senya uh, to showcase a, a handful of different things. There was actually a request came in that was act actually acted more like a reminder uh, for something I wanted to show you so I'm going to go ahead and just um, do that for you today here. So. One thing that uh, that we've covered here is the recycler view, specifically epoxy, basically the idea of different lists um, and supporting the data behind it, but um, in a linear layout here. I know we've talked about it briefly in a previous episode, but I kind of wanted to put a little bit more hands-on um, experience to it and actually build a horizontally scrolling list here. So a pretty popular thing whenever you end up uh, going into some kind of a detailed view of something, especially if it has, um, you know, an image or beautiful images in this case, um, is for this like header area to actually scroll, right? And so on the main screen, you might have just the big header image for the item. And then as you click into it, there'll be the header image as the first one. And then, uh, you know, a handful of uh, other images that you can kind of scroll through, or maybe even just completely different images that you can scroll through here in the header. So that is exactly what we're going to go ahead and do here. I've already gotten a little bit of a jump start on that and uh, we can take a look at it here. So inside of our Croatia.json file we have the structure of all of our attractions. Uh, previously we actually had a field here just called image URL with a single image and so that's kind of why we get this single image here and this single image at this list screen but now we can actually update it to be image URLs and have this be a list of strings and these strings here are each an actual um, image for the attraction itself. So I've gone ahead and, and actually modified that and specifically for Sally I've gotten a total of four images but for the other ones just for simplicity I'm just going to leave them at one so only Sally is going to have multiple images but the and all of the other attractions will just have one main header image um, so I guess you know we could continue to add more of them to the different attractions but I think it's you know you'll get the idea with just this one uh, attraction and then also we'll be able to handle the different cases where this supports multiple and this one really only has one image URL but yet our app is going to be able to handle both of those situations uh, gracefully so changing the data is pretty straightforward and not all that difficult um, to do. However, we need to change a whole bunch uh, downstream from this to actually make everything work. So if we take a look at the way we've described our data, previously we had an image URL here um, and that was set to just a string. So we're going to update this to image URLs because we've updated the name in our JSON response as well. However, I think very briefly, um, let's see if I can find the syntax. Yeah, so at JSON name equals image URLs. Uh, hold on as soon as I can type. Okay, so one thing that we haven't really touched on or maybe you haven't even picked up because all of these um, these names here inside of our data class, description, facts, ID, location, months, underscore, to, underscore, visit, match up completely to all of the, the fields here in our actual response. If for whatever reason this was descriptions with all these Z's at the end of it, Mo Moshi wouldn't know how to parse the description um, field here and it would actually fail to do so if we were to go ahead and add the at JSON annotation where we can go ahead and say name equals and then description with however many Z's there are um, that we have here. Now we've actually instructed Moshi to say this is basically the name that we want to give the variable for our data class, but this is the actual name and definition that you're going to find in here. Um, so that's this idea here, this, this requirement, is only needed if you're going to name the variable something different than the name of the, um, the variable in the JSON. So I kind of, I guess, 
jumped over that in the past, uh, but just know that you actually can change things around. Maybe you don't like the uh, underscores here, instead you'd prefer it to be camel case, you know, so you can go ahead and do that as well and just set the name uh, in the JSON annotation to be whatever exists in the JSON response. So um, to keep it simple and clean, we're just gonna go ahead and update it, uh, the actual name of our attraction field in the object as well. And instead of a string here, it's just going to be a list of strings and we will leave it at list of. So now this is gonna cause pretty large problems with building the project. And if we just go ahead and try to build it, we'll actually be instructed or told where there's you know, usages of the image URL that no longer exist. And basically the idea that this field has been converted to a list instead of a single string. So there's just gonna be a handful of issues with our project building. And uh, sometimes it's easier to just run the project and let the IDE tell you where things are failing. Um, and then you can go ahead and modify them. So in our attraction detail fragment, this is actually the class that we want to do a little bit more in. But this one here, the home fragment controller, this is the attraction epoxy model, which has, I should remove that five second delay, but we'll leave it. Um, so the attraction epoxy model here is actually what we see drawn on the screen here. And so we're telling the Picasso library to load an entire array or, or list of <laughs> image URLs, uh, which don't, which this function can't actually understand. Uh, but what we're gonna end up doing here is we are going to just hard code index zero, meaning that it will load the first URL in here um, in this list of URLs and, and disregard any of the other ones. So that's how we can kind of support the fact that this image URL list is of type or of size four and all of the other ones are of size one, but we're still going to just load the very first image regardless of how many image URLs there are um, to, you know, supply to us in the data here. The one issue with this implementation is the fact that we're hard coding uh, zero, but we aren't actually checking the size. So let's just maybe wrap something really quickly and say if attractions dot image URLs is not empty, then we're just gonna go ahead and load the first one, right? So we're not gonna load anything if there is no image. Uh, you know, maybe you would have a little bit more, um, you know, better error handling here for not having a, uh, an image URL to load, some kind of default asset or something, but we're not gonna get into that at this moment. Uh, and instead, you know, we're just gonna verify that uh, to load the image only if it is not uh, empty. So we avoid crashing at runtime in case for some reason the data comes back with, with nothing. And here, the attraction detail fragment is actually where we want to change uh, our implementation a bit, right? So this is the classic single image loading, but we actually wanna update this to basically be a recycler view of images um, that we're gonna end up loading from the data here. So if we take a look at our layout file, we have an image view here that um, we're gonna have to go ahead and change. So instead of an image view, uh, let's change this to an epoxy recycler view. We're gonna keep all of this the same, really. I mean, that's not gonna be too helpful, the source key. Um, and so is the scale type, that's not applicable, but the aspect ratio will remain, all of the constraints will remain, and then what we can actually do is give it a layout manager, which will be of type linear, and the orientation is not going to be vertical anymore, it will actually be horizontal. So you can see in the editor here, when things shift from the default vertical, you see item zero through nine, and then if you go ahead and set the orientation to horizontal, it kind of refreshes and puts the images or, or the items this way. Um, so we will also just rename this to say header, um, the epoxy recycler view. And now we need to go through, uh, just gotta update this real quick. 
now we just need to go through and uh, update the implementation to make use of a recycler view and so therefore we need a controller and we need a new layout file so the layout file is going to be pretty straightforward here we're just going to call this model header image So we just created a very simple uh, epoxy model layout file here that we're going to use, which just has the image view in here, basically mimicking exactly what we had set up here um, before we converted it to a recycler view. And so now we're ready to kind of update this implementation a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead, let's see how this looks, fragment home. So let's make another package real quick, call it details. Yeah, we'll move the that one to there. So now we're going to just make a epoxy controller here. So we're going to call this um, that's pretty wordy. So I'm just going to cut this down to header epoxy controller. And we're going to extend our epoxy controller. We are going to override our build models. Um, <clears throat> this is actually going to take a list of image URLs, right? Sorry, a list of strings. And then we really need our uh, header header image epoxy model, which is just going to take a image URL. It's going to extend our view binding column model of our uh, model header image binding and then we're just going to go ahead and take our Picasso code here really quickly paste it in and so instead of all that we're going to take the image URL and then we're just going to turn this into the or load this into the image view here. And so then very easily, we're just going to say image URLs dot for each. Uh, header image epoxy model with it. We'll give it the ID of let's do for each indexed. Actually, so we'll do index call it URL. Right, so just in case for some reason our URLs are the same, we do for each indexed, which is much like the classic for loop in Java, where you can go ahead and actually, uh, you know, have that variable i to kind of track what what position you're at or or what um, you know index you're at in the loop kind of thing. You could do the for each indexed, and it will actually provide to you the index and then the uh, single object that you've been iterating on the list. And so we're just going to go, go ahead and create an image uh, epoxy model, passing in our URL, setting a unique identifier to it, and then adding it to our controller. So this header epoxy controller is going to be ready to go. And in our implementation here, we're going to say binding.header epoxy recycler view, let's say set controller and build models. And then we're just going to call header epoxy controller with our attraction dot image URLs and the set controller and build models it does exactly that it actually sets the controller and then um, you know runs like the request model build right or, or whatever it's called uh, to actually rerun the uh, logic and and build all the models and, and display everything on the screen so you're gonna go ahead here and just run it real quick see how this turns out
Okay, so we can see here that the uh, app has rebuilt. Everything in this list looks like it is just, you know, pretty straightforward here. Uh, everything seems to be loading and working as expected. And if we click on our Solly, you know, attraction, it looks like nothing has changed here. But actually, if we go ahead and uh, scroll, we can get to this little, you know, multiple images here. Um, it's kind of in a weird state because you can get to like this half and half kind of idea. And also, especially from the beginning, you don't actually know that you can scroll this content here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and fix both of those really quickly here. So in order to solve the half and half page issue here with the scrolling, um, we can just very easily add a linear snap helper and call attached to recycler view, passing in our recycler view that we care about here. And so if we go ahead and just rebuild and rerun that, we should uh, kind of get the, I guess, expected result here with um, the page or each one of these, if you were to imagine the image being a page, uh, kind of snapping to whichever one is most open, if you will, right? So if you scroll it, a about halfway, uh, it'll calculate it and figure out which one is closer to being fully open. And then it will actually just snap for you. And so you can kind of, you know, fling it a little bit and play with it and, and have it kind of have the system, you know, take over for you. Um, and then we kind of came across the issue here of, you know, you can't really tell that you can scroll this content here. Um, especially because you know all these other ones just look exactly the same here and, and it doesn't it doesn't actually you know you just can't tell that you can scroll it so we're gonna go ahead and fix that really quickly with uh, a pretty simple straightforward library that we found uh, I haven't used this one but I've used some others that are very similar to it uh, and it says inspired here by Instagram so you know you can kind of see how this thing functions and how it works uh, a little bit of a page scrolling indicator uh, to let you know basically what page you're in the, in the list and if, um, you know, wh basically which way you can scroll. So uh, let's see here. Let's just go ahead and, and do a little bit of the setup. We're just going to copy this uh, little, little tidbit here and add it to our build.gradle file. So we're going to call this the, what is it called? The scrolling page indicator. And the latest release is 1.0.6. So we will just fill that in. 1.0.6 and go ahead and sync that and then re resume our documentation. Um, so it supports view pagers, which we haven't gotten into yet, but they work very similar to recycle reviews. Um, and so, you know, under the hood, our epoxy recycle review is a recycle review. So this is the one we will be going with. And we will uh, take this little snippet here um, to add it to our layout file. So we'll go here. Uh, now we need to figure out where we want to actually put this thing. I want to put it like, you know, against the side here and have it be vertically uh, visible for whatever reason. I guess just because we have this title here that kind of just consumes this whole bottom section that it might be a little busy if we just add that thing in there. So I want to see if we can go ahead and do that easily. So now to actually add it to our recycler view, looks like we set our layout manager, we have our adapter, we set the adapter, then we get our scrolling page indicator, and we just simply attach it to our recycler view. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, 
Yeah, this thing doesn't know. It's purely orientation. That's a bummer if this can't be vertically uh, set. Maybe he just changed it to work off orientation. So we'll leave it at vertical for now. But yeah, you see how the dots are horizontal? Like, ah. We'll figure it out. All right, so here we have our snap helper. So then afterwards, we're just going to do our recycle review indicator. All right, uh, let's give that a run, see if that works. Okay, so. Well, we have it over here. If you can see, it doesn't really look all that nice because, oh, well, look at that. It even changes as you change, you know, with the, uh, depending upon like how far you're scrolled. So very nice. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe we'll put it, let play around with where I should put it and then we'll kind of talk about it. Okay, so after playing around with it a tiny bit here, um, you know, you could see that maybe this is a little bit better um, of, a, of a view here, um, or a little bit better of a layout, but we've kind of put it at the end here. Uh, you can kind of see that it shifts with you, you know, as you scroll here a little bit. Um, and so it actually looks, you know, it doesn't look terrible. It could be better, let's be honest, but it's getting the job done for now. Uh, and then let's just go ahead and see how our things look here with, um, okay, interesting. So it actually doesn't even seem to show up if there's only one, which is a quite interesting feature that he has there. Uh, very cool. Uh, I was going to think that we had to add code to handle that, but it looks like it's being handled already. Um, so there you have it. We um, have added a new very simple epoxy controller here. We have updated our data to support any number of image URLs really uh, for our attractions and we support them both you know basically showing the header or the most important image which we're deeming to just be the first image in that list at this level and then if you go ahead and actually click into one we support the little header uh, image scroll and that kind of stuff. So um, we're again using the another recycler view here. We have a little bit of a page snapper, a little bit of a helper there to kind of just provide the UX that you would expect. And um, we've just incorporated a library, basically, you know, in a matter of a, a few minutes with a little bit of styling and a little bit of thought, and it actually kind of just fits and, and works well in the context of what we needed it to do. So, um, you know, with that being said, I hope that you have gotten an idea of you know just how easy um, making a horizontal list is. It's really just a matter of setting the orientation on the particular recycler view itself um, and then going ahead and accomplishing a relatively common UI pattern where you have you know a list of images or, or cards that you can kind of scroll through and and then you have a little page helper here to kind of indicate where you are in this entire list and um, and, and, you know, just provides the user a little bit more information, um, especially the fact that they actually can scroll and so that hopefully they would find all these additional images and stuff like that. So um, thank you for tuning in. Like I said, this is actually going to mark the end of this season, but uh, there is much more to come. So thank you for tuning in. If you've made it this far, I truly appreciate uh, a subscription. If you are not already subscribed to the channel, just to make sure that you uh, you know, keep up to date with all of the goodies that are going to be coming out uh, in the future. So uh, thank you again, and I will catch you in the next one.